Hello everyone, welcome to Vishesh Educational Videos. In this video, I am explaining about Alarm API. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. To get the notification of my new videos, please click the bell icon. And please don't forget to like the video and please don't forget to share the video with your friends. So let me begin the explanation of Alarm API. So the alarm API can be called by a process to request the kernel to send the signal or alarm signal after a certain number of real clock seconds. In simple words, you can set the alarm for some seconds. Suppose if you want to set the alarm for 5 seconds, if you want to wake up your process after 5 seconds, you can use the alarm API to uh, set the alarm, right? Right, how you can do that means you can uh, use the alarm API. Any process can be called, uh, sorry, any process can call alarm API. Any process can request the kernel to uh, call the alarm API. Why you have to call the alarm API? So, alarm API is uh, called when a certain number of clock seconds elapsed. For example, you need to set the alarm for 5 minutes. After the 5 minutes, you have to send the SIG alarm signal to the process. That means, whatever the time you have set that is elapsed, now wake up. You have to tell the process to wake up after the particular number of seconds is elapsed. How, how you can do that? You can request the kernel to send the signal alarm signal to the process. Kernel will send the signal or alarm signal to the process when a particular amount of time that is set is elapsed. When a particular number of real clock seconds elapsed, you have the kernel will uh, send a signal or alarm signal to the process just to tell the process to wake up. Hope you are understanding. The alarm API is defined in most of the Unix systems and POSIX standard and it is a POSIX.1 standard the function prototype what is the function prototype of alarm api so you can see here it is an unsigned integer alarm is using a data type uh, unsigned int so what is the argument you are giving time interval because uh, what whenever the particular amount of time is elapsed the alarm api should be called time interval is the argument so you can set the time for 5 minutes, 10 minutes or whatever you want. You can specify the time interval. Once the particular time is elapsed, the alarm should be called to wake up the process. Hope you are understanding. You can see there, the time interval argument is the number of CPU seconds elapsed time. After which the kernel will send the signal or alarm signal to the calling process. You can see there. So, the time interval argument is going to store the number of seconds that has to be elapsed. For example, 1 minute means 60 seconds, 2 minutes means 120 seconds, like that. After that uh, particular amount of time is elapsed, it's going to send the signal to the process to wake up, to the calling process to wake up. How it's going to do that? By sending the signal alarm signal. Sig alarm means signal alarm. It will send that signal to the process to wake up and one more important thing if a time interval value is zero it turns off the alarm clock obviously the elapsed time can't be zero right that's why it will turn off the alarm if the time value time interval value is zero and the return value of the alarm api is the number of cpu seconds left in the process timer Alarm API is going to return the number of seconds that is left in the timer. Right? So it will return the number of CPU seconds that is left in the timer. The effect of the previous alarm API call is cancelled and the process timer is reset with a new alarm call. If you are uh, setting the new alarm, the effect of the previous alarm call is cancelled. Whatever the time you have set with the previous alarm, that uh, effect will be cancelled and the timer will be reset with the new alarm value hope you are understanding and the process alarm clock is not passed on it on to its four code child process but an executed process retains the same alarm clock value as the pre uh, value as pre prior to the execute api system call so in simple words whatever the process alarm clock 
the process alarm clock value is not passed to the child process no 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 so process alarm clock is different uh, alarm clock is only effect uh, only is uh, related to the particular process parent process child process won't be affected by this a uh, parent process is not going to pass that uh, value to the child process but the executed process retains the same alarm clock value already executed processes will retain the same alarm clock value here the simple thing is parent process is not going to pass the uh, particular alarm value alarm clock value to its child process so this is the simple program to implement the alarm api so you have to implementing the sleep api sleep api is used to uh, turn the process to sleep turn the process turn the process to sleep you have to make process sleep so once the process uh, once the particular time is elapsed you have to wake up that process from its sleep you have to wake up that process from its sleep you can see here so here i am using a function wake up why i am using the function wake up because i have to wake up my process after the particular amount of time that is defined in the alarm api is elapsed so you can see there i am uh, setting the sorry sorry i am setting the timer here in a sleep function so i can specify any value in the timer right i can uh, right and also i am uh, specifying action because for every signal you have to specify the action and signal handler once the time is whatever the time you have set that is elapsed signal handler should wake up your process that's why i am uh, specifying wake up wake up function to the signal handler because signal handler whenever the alarm oh sorry whenever the time that is set is elapsed you have to wake up your process that's why i'm specifying wake up in the signal handler so you can see there you are setting the mask you are checking whether the mask is empty or not so you are uh, specifying the value for the signal alarm so if the signal alarm is not set so it will print as the error otherwise alarm will take the timer as the argument you have set the timer in the sleep function so alarm will take that uh, alarm will take that uh, value alarm will take that value particular timer value based on the amount of time that is elapsed uh, wake up function is right wake up function is called once the particular amount of time is elapsed you can see there amount of timer how much time is elapsed so timer once it's elapsed the wake up function will be called by the signal handler right so timer value is the argument to the alarm hope you are understanding guys suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section right simple program this is and you are using a pause because uh, it has to wait until the signal interrupts that's why you are using a pause api so you can see there the sleep function above sets up a signal handler for the sig alarm calls because whenever the process uh, right uh, wake up from the sleep you have to send a sig alarm that's why i am using a signal handler the signal alarm calls the alarm api to request the kernel to send the sig alarm signal after the timer interval and finally suspend its execution through the pass system call you can see there once the timer is once the timer is completed right once the value in the timer is elapsed so sig alarm signal will be sent to the particular handler and it's going to wake up your process from the sleep right so and it is using a pass system call to suspend its execution you can see that to interrupt signal interruption will take place using pass the wake up signal handler function is called when the signal alarm signal is sent to the process obviously signal alarm signal is sent to the process when a particular time is elapsed that is uh, specified in the timer is elapsed 
so the wake up signal handler function is called when the alarm signal alarm signal is sent to the process when it returns the pass system call it will be aborted and the calling process will return from the sleep function obviously when a process uh, take uh, when a process right is uh, sent the particular signal alarm signal when a signal alarm signal is reached the process the process will wake up it is going to wake up from the sleep hope you are understanding right so but in bst unix uh, one more function is there in other unix it's not there but in bsd unix uh, un alarm function is there sorry u alarm function is there so why it is used u alarm function in bsd unix which is the same as the alarm api it is uh, same as your alarm api it will work as the alarm api but except that the argument and the return value of the u alarm function are in microsecond units you can see here uh, the value in the timer whatever the time value you are going to set it will be in the second but whatever the function that is u alarm that is in bsd unix that is supported in bsd unix the value for the particular time the value of the time is in microseconds here here it is in the seconds but in bsd unix the timer value the time value the time value will, will be in microseconds that is the difference getting guys so that's it guys hope you understood the concept suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section thank you thank you for watching the video